now in session. It's August 3rd. Okay. Uh, a couple quick updates. We have with us tonight Karen Arn, our landscape architect. We have Clint Smith here tonight, which is our telecommunications specialist with us tonight. Thank you for both being here. Um, so for the public, we're going to have a public hearing tonight in a little while, right? For both the New York Solar Great Court Road Project and the ARX Wireless Popular Poplar Drive Cell Tower tonight. Uh, at the appropriate time, I'll open the public hearing for comments, either in person or through the streaming service. Michelle, you'll let me know when any comments come in through the chat function. Uh, public comments are not accepted for projects. For instance, the Brockwood Patch is the only other one on the uh, uh, the uh, uh, schedule for tonight. So. Uh, for the board, we've set up the Broccoli Patch site visit for August 17th. Okay, everybody, hopefully I think everybody's gonna be there. Okay, yep. six, what time are we going? Uh, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. and you'll send another notice out to everybody. Yes. So, all right, so uh, on that. And we're gonna be meeting, I think at 25 Premier Potter. Michelle, uh, Melissa will take care of us at that. Our next meeting, we're gonna be really busy again. We've got the New York Solar, we'll probably be back. ARX Wireless probably will be back. The broccoli patch may or may not be bad. I was talking to Ross tonight. Uh, we've got a couple of co-location uh, on the water tank up on King's Estates, right? Uh, AT&T and T-Mobile both have expressed interest yeah. now. Uh, and I guess at and is ready to go. They want to hang the, the arrays down lower than where Verizon, Verizon's up at the top of the tank. They're going to come down on the other side. So they're coming in. I, they wanted to come in this meeting. We had too much going on tonight. Larry Toro and 193 Black. Karen, you'll be on in short period. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, 
All right. We want to go to the the plan first, or what do we want to do? Go right to the plan. You go to plan. I, I guess you All tell right. me what you'd like to go through. Well, let's talk. Uh, overall, let's or? let's talk about what you know the village and your conversations with them. So let's bring the plan up quick. And, yeah. uh, Okay, which page would be a good one to show them? Uh, page three. This is four. This is three. I can blow these up. Let me blow this up. Yeah, you can go to the next page. So the actual contract, yeah. Uh, what? It's two, three, and four. There you go. Yep, yeah, this one's good. All right, so go ahead. So I'll take the lead on this a little bit. Concern last time I was here is with this water line main this location. So since last visit here last month, um, we had our, our um, surveyor team go back out and meet with um, the water commissioner. And they again looked at the water line location and confirmed it's, it's exactly. Um, as, I, as they did adjust it. So after talking to John today, he's asked that we change this from approximate to make it more of a legality term and put the actual um, legal description of the easement and reference it in on the site plan. So we have our engineers and we are planning on doing that, as well as making a note about the fence line, making sure that there's no posts within the, um, located within the easement. So sound good? Mr. Dunn. It sounds good, yeah. But you can see it on the map, but yeah, correct. Yeah, but it sounds good. That's something better than uh, that. This all happened when we got a letter from the mayor. Uh, let me just bring that up quick. Right. Okay. That's all right. This was a letter that we received. I think it's this one here, right? Yep. This came from the mayor. So the mayor was looking for the easement to be fully depicted as described in the attached deed documents. Uh, easement is not encroached or built on. So what, they, what Jackie was talking about was the, the fence post itself won't go into the easement itself. Yep. The fence will stretch across because the fence could always be taken down. Uh, and the road is okay. I guess that's what they've come up with. So. Yeah, we have correspondence with the um, uh, I guess it was the water commissioner, water commissioner about the depth of the gravel on on that actual easement. We'll, we'll comply with all of that. Okay. Eventually, we'll probably need a letter back from the mayor or something saying that they're okay with this. Yeah. All right. So we'll see what happens with that. So, um, so next, let's turn it over to Karen. Uh, I'm going to bring up. Let's go back to the plan. And we'll take comments from the board in a couple of minutes. Let's just get through this and that. So um, hold on just one second. All right, Karen, which page do you remember? Uh, the landscape plan is going. Uh, so we'll go. page. 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 Um, I going the wrong way now? Page. No. Okay. Which, which one? C204. There it is. OK.
Okay, go ahead. The floor is yours. I'll shorten this a little bit so we can see the whole plan, maybe. So we had comments from various neighbors. One thing one Lehigh which is a already in the way so we don't think there's much of a, a problem there and then 186 which I think is over here a little bit more um, we there is a row of cedar trees for oh wait this must be 186 right here um, there's a row of cedar trees I just forget all the numbers there's a row of cedar trees and we asked them to put another row in because they were spaced kind of far apart um, and to fill in the gaps quicker, and they did that. So, and then 189 Gray Court Road, um, thick planting is proposed on the south. Oh, sorry, this 189 Gray Court Road was over here. Thick planting was provided here. Um, and so, there was most of the, most of the, um, uh, people that spoke last time, with most of their um, views were screened or were going to be screened by proposed vegetation. Um, the two that needed additional screening, they, um, they, they put, updated the plans and provided additional screening. <clears throat> so that is, so we are good with this landscape plan. I think they did a great job. We just have to make sure it's maintained, and that's why Eric, I, I have a question for you. we asked for this. Right up here, it, you added this, this, some of this. Some so there was, there. there was, um, I wish I wish I brought, like, we looked at this so long ago, I forget exactly the um, properties, but one of the properties where there was some cedar, I think it was that one, we added another layer. I guess cedar. my question is, it looks like all this landscaping is done on this property, if not in here. Uh, it all, all of the landscaping, I believe, is on the um, on the property of yeah. yeah it's all. It should yeah, be all on the boundary. Line. Yes, that's the one, and it is all on on. Right there. Um, right there. Yeah, it's all on there. Right here. So, yeah, this so this line. is the property line. I could show you. That's yeah, the property line as well. Oh. The See, property I, line. Let me right. blow that up, Larry. Just hold on a second. It actually extends even across the street. Yeah. So, yeah, the property line is right here. So, you see the property line? Okay. Got it. So. That makes sense. Yeah. I just said. One other question, the board can, we'll go back to the board. So what about this house? Is there a house here? Oh, there is a house, and that's all white pines. We did look at that. And there's all, all through here, that's already Yeah, there, that that's existing the tree vegetation line right there. is a lot of evergreen. That's the tree line. And plus topography helps hide it, because the topography goes out. 
Okay. So yeah, we did look at that as well. Yeah, these two, these two will, will hardly see it with that thick vegetation there. Um, this one had a little view this way, but now that all these will be planted or be mitigated. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, all right, hang in with us. So you, you finished? Yes. All right, hang in with us for now. So, a uh, couple other things. They did receive a environmental no impact letter from the DEC for rattlesnakes and what was the other one about the bod uh, So there were no bod turtles and no. Uh, that came in from the DEC. Al, you had a letter? I did. Um, hold on just a second. This was your letter. Go ahead, Al. Yeah, well, uh, you know, the first thing is, is we did get the letter from uh, SHPO regarding the landscaping. And they you know, accepted what the, uh, the applicant put down along with the uh, all carriage guys. Accepted that, which was good to see it in writing. Uh, the applicant has to provide this landscaping as for Carolyn the plan, uh, keep Shippo happy. They had uh, uh, also got a letter from Lisa Massey from the DEC regarding a taking permit for endangered and threatened species. And uh, they found that uh, there was no incidental taking shown, and that that letter is good from, uh, for one year. Uh, from now. So if in fact uh, they don't get this done in, in that period, then they have to reapply uh, for another letter. We reviewed the file for the continuation of the public hearing to find that the technical information of SWIP or in order uh, from what we had asked for. Uh, the main addition of the landscaping will be considered by Karen and she just went over. Uh, agreement with the town of decommissioning bond and pilot payments to be completed, escrow account set up for SWIFT and other inspections with the town. And then I related to the letter I got right same time everybody else did about the village easement. I was glad that the applicant measured, uh, mentioned that the village wanted a certain layer of gravel over to buffer it. So that's, a, that's something else I was going to add. But other than that, uh, I'm fine with uh, the submittal. All right. Uh, this action also was uh, required a, a Orange County 239 to Orange County planning and just seems like everything we sent to them there's no response. So uh, we have not heard a word back from them. How much time is coming? Months? No, I said that. Yeah. Six months? Oh, four yeah. months? So that's, that's, that's more than 30 days. Oh, more than 30 days. Every project, yeah. every project we've sent to them waiting is more than 30 days. All right. So no response. And I did talk to the Orange County Commissioner of Planning about it, so, but still nothing's come out. So. Um, all right, turn it over to the board. We'll start with Justin. Any comments, questions? And no, I mean, I think, it, here? I think it Field. looks pretty good. All right, John. Uh, what I saw, I addressed what was brought up at the last meeting. Okay, Jackie? I'm um, good. I think that maintenance plan is a really smart idea. Will cover a lot of ah. I think they've addressed everything I mentioned in this letter. So. Okay. All right. Um, in the FAAF form, um, form you know, part two, uh, on uh, page six, uh, 9F, uh, asked, there are several projects visible within the following distance of the proposed project. The answer is no. That's what's checked. Um, however, that's not correct. Currently, there are three large commercial solar array systems in Chester. Uh, one is on Black Meadow Road, um, and fortunately, that you know that system is hidden and not seen by any of the residents or anything like that. Um, the, there's another on King's Highway, the Seligman property, um, and there's another on Johnson Road, um, which you can see from Route 94 and also Johnson Road, but fortunately there's no really no homes there, so no one's really impacted. So the three that I stated, you know, the existing commercial arrays, don't affect anybody. 
the concern I have is this is going into you know, an area that will be uh, affected by you know, the neighbors surrounding um, this site. Uh, I, I do have a concern that uh, you know no assessment was done on a potential uh, valuation of homes. Um, it will have an impact. What that is, I don't know. But there was no evaluation performed at all to see what that impact would be financially to the homeowners. Um, I had requested many months ago photos of other similar solar arrays, and that so far that hasn't been. Uh, I mean, there are quite a few uh, photos that were provided surrounding the site, but I, I feel that they were selective and limited. Uh, could have been a little more thorough. Um, let's see. Um, I know you said there's no outdoor lighting, but I'm sure it's got to be some. Uh, just like this, wherever your inverters and stuff. So how do you work at night if you have to do? We anything? don't work at night. It's a uh, community scale solar. Right. So there's not going to be any outdoor lighting. We don't have any substations okay. or anything. That's fine. If there is none, that's fine. Um, I think I can answer this one on F. That is projects that are visible from our project, right? Some projects are visible within the following distance of the proposed project. Not well, yeah, but it says three and five miles, right? Are those visible from the projects that you're saying? They are similar projects that are within the following distance of proposed. It doesn't say visible, it says within distance. That's visible. Visible within. That's the word visible. Still, we have, my point is, we do have three existing large solar commercial arrays in town already. Uh, I guess a concern I have is um, how many should we have in town? Um, you know, what is, you know, do we have three, do we have 10? You know, it's one thing if they're not visible, it doesn't affect anybody, but certainly this site would. But let me move on to there. Um, the dis decommissioning, um, it states uh, in the decommissioning claim, that uh, you're factoring this uh, two percent over 20 years, and the um, and the price that you come up with is uh, I think we'll do it uh, 240 thousand dollars, something like that. Yeah, 240 thousand dollars, 20 years from now. Yeah, so these are based on calculations that are, um, there's like studies that, that our engineers do to come up with these calculations. We didn't just have them up. Okay, so let's, let's, let's go there for a moment. So the plan is to do removing 1,200 panels per day. You know, there's almost 12,000 panels, so you're going to take about 10 days to do to remove all the panels, right? So you're doing 1,200 panels per day. That's one panel every 24 seconds. Sorry, I don't believe that number. Don't believe that number. Um, you know, because you're 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 disconnecting the wire, you're taping the wire, you're removing the module from the frame, then you're stacking on a pallet, then you're gonna have to tie them down and then move. There's no way you're gonna do them, you know, one every 24 seconds. I, I just don't believe the number. It, it, uh, I think your number is grossly wrong by three or four fold. Um, you know, it, it's. Uh, so I think you need to go back and do your on that. It's just not realistic. The, these these values are comparable with other projects, very similar in size and location. Um, like I said, they're they're not numbers that we made up and calculated based on our own assumptions. They are uh, standard assumptions that are used in the industry. Do you, you think you'd be able to do all those items in 24 seconds? I'm not a I'm not an engineer. Uh, I'm not a contractor. There's a, I wouldn't be able to answer that question. Okay. Just as a past But that's just okay. to give you some information. So I, I question it. Okay. Now the other thing, part of that decommission plan, uh, another plan is if there's going to be a decommission plan, 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 there's going to be a Keeps on running 25 or 30 years. The plan is updated. <laughs> so is it going to be a new bond? Is it going to be something in writing and guaranteeing the bond would be adjusted? Yes, I'm not exactly sure. Of the I mean, so far there's nothing there. I'm just raising questions that come in my mind 
Um, there's also, um, I assume the staging area is on site? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So then I didn't see any costs about transporting the panels to a recycling center. So we don't include salvage value for um, our decommissioning plant. We only include costs. Well, it's, there's still a cost to transport it somewhere. That's not in there. Okay. Uh, there may be potentially a cost to, for the recycling of those panels. What about also the, all the steel framework, the transporting of that to somewhere? Those those costs aren't there. I'm just bringing out things that the decommissioning plan, the costing is, is wrong. It just, I was in, I've been in the construction business for 30 years, and I did I, it's things that I did, and it just, it's not right. It just, it, it's glaring that it's not correct. The, Interest rate, uh, the the inflation rate of two percent. Um, I know, having attended some state webinars, and which included decommissioning, the state's recommendation is you come up with the current cost, add twenty five percent, and then add two and a half percent compounded over the, the term, whether it's twenty two years. Okay, that's what the state recommends. Um, I'm not sure 2% is uh, uh, a good enough number. Okay. Uh, the, I noticed on all the site drawings or anything, there were no drawings depicting the panels, you know, giving a cross section or anything like that on, on the framework and panels or anything. You just show an over, overview. Yeah. You know, like, a nice staff like that. You're looking for like simulations of what the panels look well, like. Well, I mean, in site plans, you have details about different things. There, and there was no details in there about the frameworks or the or the, or the panels that I did. Well, maybe I'm, I missed it, but I, I, I didn't see that. It'd be nice to have that information. Yeah, the, the, spec the specifications should be in there, and if not, we have all the technical specs. Okay. Um, just for my information, is is your company, the company that's putting this up, are they getting state and federal funding for this? It's through an incentive, nicer to incentive program. Okay. Because I noticed that all the equipment is non-USA made. <laughs> it's yeah, it's getting, find US made. Find some. <laughs> I would be happy to buy it. You're getting uh, federal you know, state money you're using, uh, I mean, that's not really our purview, but uh, I noticed that all the equipment is not made in the United States. Yeah, it's, uh, they don't make it in the United States. It's a very few companies. Get to getting better fun. All right, that's enough. That's all I have. <laughs> okay, Doc. Yeah. Jack. So, Larry, a couple things here. So, White Oak Farms is visible from a whole bunch of houses. We went, we went through an extensive landscaping plan back up there. We had to put big boys or big giants, or whatever we call those, Jack, in there. Uh, so, that definitely, you know, Johnson Road was visible from, there's a private road going in there. You got the Dermas living up in there. So the, all those houses saw the, you can see and saw the soul. So it's not that they're in, it's no different than here. Right? The Black Metal Road, your development up there, we had to put some screening and we looked at some of the shots going down through there. It might be in an industrial, and all these are industrial areas or a farm. Uh, so that's not necessarily true. It also says the word visible, right? Is whether you like the word visible or not, it says the word visible. So that's why the answer would have been no, because they're not visible from anywhere from this project here. It's not like there's a solar farm sitting next to it. So uh, the other thing is the bonding is pretty much always negotiated with the town. Al, you got involved in the bonding. Uh, the bonding numbers, Scott Bonasek, the town attorney, accepted the, the numbers and the bonds and all that stuff like that. So it's not necessarily our numbers or our really our responsibility to do that. They do that, right? And no, no, I understand that. Well, that's what you said. So you might say you understand. Well, I'm it, just, I'm just saying that the numbers aren't believable. That's what I'm saying. Well, but that's you've got to go to the town board and talk to that. Okay. Not numbers that we came up with. Here, okay, they're, they're numbers that they they negotiated and came up with as far as that goes. So, yeah. all right, uh, John. Any other comments, questions? No. Justin. No. Okay. All right. So at this uh, uh, point, I'm going to open, reopen the public hearing. All right, Melissa, the uh, mails, the, the notices were sent out. Time settled record. Everything. Everything was uh, correct. So let the record reflect the proper notices. 
was sent by mail and the legal notice was published. Uh, and that was actually the last time, not this time, we didn't do any kind of republishing for this. Uh, uh, we, we explained this was going to be a continuation that there would be no new notices going out. Uh, so again, this is not a question and answer session here. We may answer a couple on that. Uh, and if you're watching on the screen with Michelle over there, you can chat in any of your questions. And then after we get done with anybody in the audience, we'll go ahead and uh, take the uh, comments from the uh, stream. So at this point in time, I'm going to open the public hearing just the same as last time. Please just raise your hand and then come up to the podium if you could. Uh, and state your name and address. And, uh, uh, Mr. Becker? Tom Becker, 163 Lehigh Avenue, uh, Chester. Uh, again, I just want to apologize for the last meeting and the complications that came about on the water line. I did meet up with Gary Green. We did review the location of that main. We found the markers that helped clarify where it belonged. And I'm glad to see that that took place and that things got corrected with this panels. It was a concern of mine and I'm sorry for any complication for the board or anybody, but uh, I'm glad it did get, did get taken care of. And do you have the pictures I sent by any Let's chance? See. Yeah, that's actually a photo of three Sanford Avenue. Uh, it's a home there. And, you know, that's uh, kind of a rendition of what a lot of the homes are going to look at on Sanford. This is Marion. Though, you uh, Marion, this is excuse Marion. me. Yeah, that's right. uh, Marion Court, three, three Marion Court. And, you know, that's kind of a rendition of what anybody along this array is going to look at. So with that being said, I think we, in some instances, I think the, companies that are installing this maybe should try to look at some unique ways of creating some blending for these projects so they don't stand out so much i mean basically we're going to be looking at a sea of black you know we're not going to be looking at green anymore the, the, the panels are going to tilt at one point you're going to be seeing green maybe you won't be seeing the panels once they flip the other way you're going to see you're either going to see them from the side or you're going to see them on you know directly you know a lot of the planting that's going around the project you know, is, is working on the edge of the project, but it's not covering anything in the middle of the project. That's why I kind of made a recommendation that possibly in, in the area of the water main, being that there is an easement there, would it be possible to, to put a row of trees or something just to break the project up? I see that didn't take place, but I mean, it's just an idea. Uh, again, this is what people are going to look at. Anything they could do to think outside the box to make this more aesthetically pleasure, you know, pleasing to people that are going to look at it. I mean, other than basically grading this property down flat and planting 20 or 30 foot trees, we're going to see it without question. Uh, so again, it is important for, for the residents, you know, we're kind of stuck with this. It is a better option than other things. As far as property values, we, we have no idea how it affects property values, but when you're looking at something like that, certainly, a home that looks at that is going to be easier to sell than a home that's going to be looking at solar panels in the future. Just you know, nobody has that answer, but it certainly it certainly affects. Uh, and at this point, I guess uh, you know we only have one chance to get this right. Again, that's what I mentioned the last time. You know, anything that the board can think about, anything the company could possibly think of. I did reach out to another company and, and nobody has in the past coded the or painted the, the framework. I don't know that that should be off the table. It's still, if there was a rendition done possibly of how this was going to look, maybe it would show that by coding this, it would be a positive thing for the residents to see a framework coded. I mean, you're going to see black panels and they are going to turn. So at certain points, you're going to see a different view at different times of the day. So just, you know, I'm just asking everybody to just give it a really good look. And if this company can come up with a 
you know, more unique ways to make these things blend into residential areas, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay, next. Good evening, everybody. Nemehana 186, the Great Court Road. Would you be able, please, to go back to that new plantation that was uh, Karen was talking about? Yeah, yes. right there. Yes. Make it bigger size, if possible, please. You want it bigger? Yes. yes. Go down. There you go. There you go. Uh, Karen mentioned that there's three cedars trees there. These are our trees. There's only one, and two are dying. The three dying, like maybe seven feet tall. And she said she wants to plant additional how many? Cedar trees. There's like uh, how tall are you planning to plant them? One, there's twenty on the plant. Um, are they like babies or two feet high? Because three is thick. How long this may take? Any study at all to get 20 um, feet high? To get 20 feet yes. high? Yes. Because what so I have is 20 feet, I can see the entire field after with that height. Maybe 20 feet to 35 feet. That long, I never measured it. But you can see the entire field with that tree. So you're planning to put how many, you said? 10 feet, 5 feet? Two, five to six feet. So this may take additional maybe 30 years to cover that field. I'm inviting just to, I want to go on the record, everybody here to come to my property. And if I put that property for sale, would you buy it? With that land loaded with solar panels. I'm asking you, I'm going to go on record, everybody. Everybody <coughs> welcome to come to visit my property. I am far 20 feet from here to the property. Like from here to that wall, this is the distance between me and that property. Not that far at all. So you're going to tell me you're going to plant five feet trees to fix the issue. I don't think if this was your property, you would accept it. These are, nobody visit, by the way. I, wh when did we you went, visit? Well, we went to, we didn't go in your property. We went to the, uh, if you had been to my property, you would definitely would consider a different story. No doubt in my mind. It's no brainer. I'm, I'm free from here to, to that door. And you're going to tell me you're going to plant cedar tree? I know how cedar tree grow. It doesn't grow much. It doesn't, doesn't go fast, it no matter what you do. The only thing I could suggest as a possible um, alternative is to plant green giants. Maybe you're going to. And one thing, and the other, the other day I raised the point. These panels, they're going to be turning, shifting left and right, or east and west, whatever you like. How noisy that is. Nobody gave me an answer. Nobody did. It's not I looked it up honestly on YouTube to find any shift in panels that sort of. I couldn't find anything. Is it noisy or not noisy? Nobody gave me an answer. No, we live next door. The source of noise would be those two inverters that are um, in the access room. There's no, there's not a significant amount of noise above ambient standards for just the rotation of the panels. It's just so the they were to take silently, no, no noise whatsoever. Not above like acceptable. Ambient and that noise. that radiation will hit our house because the sun is hitting this house. Not, I mean, uh, this side. And your panel is going to be reflecting on this side. So it would be like a popcorn in the middle. <laughs> I, 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 Jackie, we've got to, it's not a question and answer. Okay. Session, so listen to what you have to say. And we'll take no, but I need right. an answer, sir. I would like to have an answer. Nobody give me an answer. I mean, raising this question again a million times without an answer is pointless. Nobody can give me an answer. I don't want to get there. I said, oh, too bad. You know, we noticed that now. You know, that's wrong. It's not fair. I'm asking you, please come to visit my property and you decide, see for yourself. 186 Great Road, go right now after we finish here. I'm willing to accept everybody in here at once and take a look for yourself. Planting five trees or 20 trees or 50 trees, cedars is going to be, we all know how cedars, how fast they grow. They don't grow much, three inches a year, five inches a year. It's not enough. It, I mean, it's a wrong thing. It's a, look pretty. I have one. But it's not enough. I don't think anybody would own that property would like it to plant it next door. Please come visit me. Anybody. No, no, 
no time limits. Any to just come by and take a look at this. We're, we're not downhill. We're right on the property. The other day, I brought three posters. I didn't bring it with me. You asked me not to. But we are right there. We are flat land with that property, right on it. I'm fighting this because it's our home. Anybody, if this was your home, you would do the same, if not more. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Well, you know, I came a little late, but. Name, address, and Barbara Freya, 189 Great Court Road. Bring it down a little bit. I thought I saw my name over there. You want it a little less? No, a little down. Um, you're oh, on break. oh, that's me right there, Barbara. So I don't know. I've never been to um, a planning committee like this before board meeting. Um, but I'm sitting back here. I'm listening even today and previously. It seems like it's a done deal. Do you people even care about how we are going? I mean, you work for us. All right, you work for, for the citizens of Chester, the residents of Chester. Our tax um, money pays whatever salary. I don't know if you're paid or if you are, um, you know, or board members and it's volu volunteering. But I would like to see some concern. Mr. Chairman, all, what I'm hearing projected from you is that it's a done deal. Did you just hear what he said? Well, we have ears and we hear what he said. Okay. But nothing, no expression as to. Um, because this is a public hearing, what I said to you, it's not a question and answer session. We're required by law to listen the, to what the you issue have to say is and that take everything into none of, Nobody came to the people that will be most affected by this to ask us how we feel about it, how is this going to affect us, you know. Um, and so on and so forth. And that's a problem for me. It's I'm sitting here works. and I'm re and I'm looking it's at your how faces. It works. It's not how it works. Projects don't knock. Whether Mr. Becker said that last time, they don't knock on your door and they don't say, "Do do you want this here?" It just doesn't work. That way. I know. I, I but you should at least. So we give you the opportunity now. To come but in you should at least come over and see how it's going to affect us, the people that live here. All right, so that you can make recommendations that will work for the company, for the seller, and for the residents. Maybe he, you need to put up, um, what, what did you say, Karen? What kind of trees are you going to put up, cedar, cedar tree? Cedar, uh, cedar tree? And he said it's going to take a long time to grow. Are there anything else that can be done aside from the cedar trees? The one thing that might would grow faster would be giant. So. And, I'm sure they would just and the green giants, um, when you plant them, they how tall? At the bottom, but if, if his concerns are high, it doesn't matter if they get at the bottom. I'm just, I, they I just, grow a foot to two feet a year. Mm. They're the fastest growing vegetation. The evergreen and what about the gentleman at the far end, the issue that he raised about whether or not there was supposed to have been a report or somebody requested a report as to how this was going to affect our property value was that done? Was that report done? Was there was there follow up by this board? Do you even care? First of all, there's been many projects. I've been on. I've run this board since 2008. We have not done any kind of. We don't have assessors coming in and look at houses and things like that. Sometimes projects do that. I've seen that in the past when they come in. But every project. So why don't you here, just make make? We don't go ahead and. So, so but, but your point is that sometimes they've been done before. They mean, sometimes it's been done before. It has been done before. No, not by us. Okay. Sometimes the question gets asked, and sometimes we do. But is there any not bar? Us. Is there they any, come any in with, a, is with there, proof that it doesn't affect the valuation? Okay? Is there anything that should stop you from trying to get this report to help make your decision? Well, who do we go to? We go ahead. I don't we, know. We hire uh, uh, an assessor's thing. I don't and know we don't how do it's that. done. We can. Not, it's you said it has been done before. Board. You're talking over me. Sorry. All right. If you want to continue to talk over me, then we're just going to close it down. Oh, so ahead. that's not a practice that planning boards do. All right. We don't. We try to mitigate everything. We listen to that. We're going to listen to this gentleman. Maybe we have to plant green giants that grow to 30 feet and can grow two feet a year. And so, in a decent amount of time, it'll maybe cover it for you. We did that up in uh, uh, Oak Street. Uh, not Oak. Oak. Uh, what's that? White Oaks Drive. 
we put the green giants on a couple of the houses we were worried we put a string of those i don't remember how we did uh they got up pretty big uh, and that's an evergreen that can grow up to 30 feet tall it's a lot faster growing so uh we have to worry about deer a little bit on those because they're nippers so we listen to these things that's our job is to listen to the public listen to what the applicant wants to do listen to what the zoning calls i ran this last time i'll bring it up again tonight what could go here we could have factories and lumber yards and everything else here the farmer we didn't propose this project okay we don't propose these things right uh, so the farmer went to New York Solar or New York Solar went to them. I don't know how the negotiations started. I don't care. They look at the zoning in the town of Chester. Town of Chester Lord has large scale zoning is allowed. Uh, solar farms are allowed. They then they put a proposal in front of us. We listened to the public. We tried to even before uh, before you even public was even called here, we engaged Karen to take a look and come up with some kind of a plan. Uh, you know, uh, and that's how the process works. Very simple. We don't knock, nobody knocks on doors and says, oh, would you like us to be here? Well, because we know what the answer is going to be on every single project. It's going to be no, because everybody wants the farmland to stay that well. But you need to go speak to Mr. Johnson and find out why he wants to put a solar farm on his property, because that's it's not this board or the town of Chester. Did that. Well, uh, you know, so that's the one you need to ask those questions on. Well, no, the board approves also. If the board decides that it shouldn't happen, it will not happen as well. Well, we, we approve everything based on we try to mitigate as best we can for the neighbors and we listen to the neighbors uh, and try to come up with the best possible package that we can for people. The fastest growing, we Karen's uh, is a magician here. If, if you take a ride up on Gibson on uh, Sugarloaf Mountain Road and look at a uh, substation up there and see what she did up in there, you don't even know the damn thing's there. And I couldn't believe in this short period of time, 10 years or so, it disappeared. Uh, because of her work up there. So I, you know, this is what we do. We engage a landscape architect to come in and work with us. We, we know that the neighbors were going to be affected. We do know that. Okay. We, we you know, uh, and we, and this is what we do. And, and we work with the applicant and, and try to come up with the best possible solution we can for everybody. That's what we do. All right. Um, the last time I was here, I did ask, um, was there any uh, studies done as to the, um, is there any health side effects? from these panels going up? Does anyone know long term? No studies that can do that. As well, same with the, um, um, the other topic. Uh, not knowing, oh, property values. There's been multiple studies all around the world for solar projects, and there's no studies that can um, confirm that there's any impact, negative impact on property values. As, mm -hmm. and, and people are shocking, yeah, but it's, it's studies have been done. So with the water, I don't know much about water supplies and the easement and so on, um, because this is so close to the Chester water system. Is that what it is? Is there a possibility of leakage or radiation, anything going to the soil that may affect uh, our water supply? I mean, has any study been done about that? No. I, I, there have been multiple studies that have been done that. The old panels, old style panels that are from like 20 years ago, they did have material that used to leach into the ground. Um, the new panels that we use do, do not, they're approved by um, whatever, UA standards of technical stuff that I, I don't necessarily know to the top of my head, but um, they are approved from the EPA. They're clean standards, no evidence of contamination from panels. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> Okay, got the record reflected. No one else wants to speak uh, for or against the uh, application. I'll take a motion to. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. You got to. Michelle, you got to keep me in line. All right. So no one on line. Yes, sir. Okay, take a motion to close the public hearing. Anybody? Motion by Justin, second by Barry. All in favor? Aye. All right. The public hearing will be closed. Uh, I'm assuming. Uh, well, Dave, you had a couple comments you wanted to talk on. Just real quick, I'll have to put you on the spot. Is there any other agency that issues a permit or is required to issue an approval for this project besides the planning board? The building department. Just the building department. Okay. All right. So I just want to make sure we, we covered our bases from the secret point of view. And if there's no other involved agencies that would issue a permit except after the building department, 
the, there could have been the DEC taking permit. However, uh, that was signed off. Okay. And the reason why I ask is in going through the file earlier today, uh, this is a type one action under seeker. If there's other involved agencies, agencies that have to issue permits or approvals other than the building department, which has always does that, uh, we'd have to circulate a notice. If we're the only involved agency, then we don't need to do that in that basis cover. I just want to make sure. All right. Okay. All right. Um, any other final comments, questions for anybody on the board? Jackie, I'm assuming you want to come back in on the September 7th? First. First. I think it's no. whatever it is. Fifth? It's no, the fifth is I bet there's an Monday. answer. Well, I, I got to go. Yeah. September 7th. September 7th. See that hand? Not that fifth, old. Is, yeah. fifth is Labor Day. So Wednesday, September 7th. Okay? okay, so you'll come back in then. We'll have our final discussions at that point in time. Karen, you'll take into consideration uh, some of this, okay? Yes. Maybe switching out to the Green Giants, yes. which can grow up to 30 feet and a quicker, much quicker much type of. Uh, they grow taller than that. They grow much Okay. All right. All right. So we'll see. Uh, 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 this will be on our website. Be, we have our agenda always updated on the website. Please come in if you want to come in on this September 7th. So, Jackie, also, we have to get a, maybe a final letter from the mayor, making sure that that all looks good as far as you'll get the plans updated with the proper verbiage and for the mayor. Yeah, I will get it all. all right. It'll be in your desk. You get that on set. All right. So. All right, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next thing on agenda will be a public hearing for ARX Wireless. Paul? Well, Clint, you could come up in the front too. Karen, we're going to see you on the 7th. Right, we'll, uh, Melissa will get an uh, email out to you. Okay. So. 17. Uh, probably go to the podium, maybe. Wherever you want me, sir. Yeah, go to the podium first. Do you so. have the notice of mailing? Yes, please. Thank you. All right, hold it. Just let me. All right, so we got a lot of stuff. Where do you want me to start? Uh, well, sir, uh, do you have a PDF called Aerial of Sight? Aerial? Hold on, just a second. Okay, so the uh, photo, uh, Aerial on Sight. Uh, looks like it. Just tell us who you are for the record. I'm yeah. sorry, my name is Paul Ryan. I'm from the Murray Law Firm, and we represent ARCS. I'm also here with Wasif Sharif, who's from Verizon, and he's been the RF engineer on the project from the inception. Okay. And we have Clint Smith, our telecommunications specialist. With us. He's, he's, he works for you. Yes, he works for us. <laughs> As does Mr. Fusco. There is a pointer. You may want to grab that pointer up here. There's one there. Right by the mic. Oh, is there one up there, too? There should be one at the podium. There's one over there. There's another one. Okay. So you walk us through whatever you want us to show. Tell me if you need it blown up more or whatever. Okay. Um, the parcel in question is a 4.6 acre parcel that used to be a wastewater treatment plant for the town. The town actually approached Arcs and Verizon about putting a tower on the site. So they recognized the need prior to us getting involved. Um, it's zoned SR2. So uh, cell towers are permitted use there. Um, what we're proposing is 150 foot put, 150 foot pole, um, with a four four foot lightning rod on top. Verizon would place their uh, three antennas or their three panels of three antennas on the top at the 146 foot level, and then there'd be co-location for other cellular vendors below Verizon. The access for the property would come in from Poplar Street. <laughs> Could you put up another one called Overall Site Plan? Uh, I think 
think this was the exhibit one. Uh, let me see. Which one? Last elevation. I think it's this let's, one let's here see. that you're calling the site plan. Nope. No, not this one, the exhibit B. <clears throat> um, Carol, the site application for school oh. gen. Okay, well we we can. Is it on the way? It, it's not. It's not that critical, so we can we can get to it another way anyway. But well, wait a minute, I can. Get there quick. Let me see what's going on. Here. Okay. Site plan and exhibits. There you go. Okay. This is that one. That... Yeah, that's not it. This is not it. This is back that exhibit B again. This is what they sent this us. Got I mean, this does have your site plan on there. It might be in there. Oh, okay. Well, we can use this. All right. So let me. All right. Let me open up the other one because the other one's going to be cleaner. Exhibit B. Hang on just a second. Um, they stuffed a whole bunch of things in. It's a 130 page document. So um, besides your RF, I think you may have site plan stuff in there. There's your aerial. Okay. This is good for now, sir. All right. All right. So in the center, right right here, this square, that's a 60 by 60 foot uh, fence enclosure that we put the monopole in. <clears throat> and then some of the other related telecom equipment along with the generator. And uh, that's the limited area of physical ground disturbance. There's not a lot of clearing that's necessary here. It's flat and level. There's no wetlands on the property. We meet the setback requirements. If you take into account the uh, parcel over here is also town owned <clears throat> on, on the bottom right of that diagram. So there's a, a setback requirement, which is essentially the height of the tower plus some additional feet. If the thing were hypothetically a fall over, which we've never had happen. Um, and then the setback requirements in the other directions were fine on. Do you have one called fence compound? Well, with you till next, we can skip that. Uh, okay, so that's uh, right here. This is a good one for. So our utilities are going underground from this area out towards Poplar. This is the area we're going to have an easement on either side of the road, but it's again minimal disturbance. The uh, facility be unmanned. There'll be no lighting on the pole itself. There will be lighting at the ground level for maintenance to occur, um, or should someone need to come and do a repair or something like that also for some security reasons. But um, essentially at night, you, wouldn't, you would, really wouldn't see any lighting here. Do we have a, do you wanna scroll down and see if you have a tower elevation? Yeah, you gave us that a new a one. I did. I gave you a revised one this afternoon. I have to pull this up a bit more. It's it's three or four pages into it. Mention something uh, about this project? No, not now. It just it would be relating to water that would be. It's a public in. hearing will happen, so. Okay. okay, can you keep going? Keep going. Yeah, I'm looking for like a side view of the tower itself. We're getting there. This is some of the ground equipment. All right, this is what we're looking at. If you can make it slightly smaller. 
okay, on our original plan, um, some of the language is different here. Verizon is still going to be at the top of the 150 foot bowl at the 146 foot level. Um, we've got these proposed co-location vendors here, and then there is a potential at some point in the future, if we need to extend the poll, we would come back to the town and ask to put additional links up above the poll at some point. It's, it's nothing we're planning to do today, but it's, it's a potential expansion. The language on the other one had said, these were future antennas. We just wanted you to know that they're planned, proposed. So the, we're planning to put them in. It's not something that's far off. So we'll, we'll be looking for co-location vendors as soon as we build the tower. <coughs> um, there's no need for aerial lighting on this. We checked with the FAA. Um, we've submitted a full EAF form for the town review. We've started the dialogue with your telecommunications engineer and with your other engineer, Mr. Fusco. Um, we've addressed a lot of the questions that have come up. There's still some lingering issues that need to be resolved, um, but our application is, is solid and complete. And I'm ready, I guess, for questions from the board. All right, uh, so let's talk a little bit about what happened last Saturday, All right? Uh, so there was a balloon test run last Saturday. Um, so there was a balloon test run last Saturday. I don't know how many board members. Justin, you went? Yes, I did. John, did you get a chance? Mm -hmm. I did. Uh, Mary, did I know I was there with Mary? Jackie? I don't think but you saw the location saw and I thought, did you get a chance to go? That's right. So, so uh, they they floated a balloon and then they went out. Uh, did they have the, here it is, this is what I was looking. Uh, they went and showed here, it's a circle out about a mile, I guess. And they took pictures. The red dots represent, uh, can't see the, uh, the green dots, uh, say they can see uh, the tower, the balloon, obviously there's no tower. And the uh, yellow, which I don't think there's any on there, or it might have been one yellow, no, there's no yellow dots and that's a partial C or something. So they talked about, it's on here and that. Uh, so then they went from there, obviously this area here will be the most affected right here. So this is Walt Lake Estates up in the top, in this area. And then they went out in out towards Chester. This is LaRue Road running out this way. They went out into Monroe, into School Road. They went into different places and stuff like that. Uh, and then they came up with, they took all those, they created, oops, a number. Let me blow this up a little bit more. It's easier to see. So now you can see they have numbers. And on the numbers, if it's green, they, they their photo analysis shots are saying it's going to be visible from those locations. The reds, it's not going to be visible. Uh, they numbered them, and then they came up with pictures. So what they did with the pictures, OK. So so first of all, I, I realize that a lot of the public maybe sometimes doesn't understand this or see it, but we're not closing the public hearing tonight. So you're going to have a chance to go home and take a look at this, hopefully, if you want. Uh, look it out on the web and uh, see what they come up with. So basically, in the pictures, I'm not going to go through each one. They took uh, a shot here. So for instance, on this one, let me go down a little bit on this. So they said this house here, this is the existing shot. Uh, we can see what they did here. We can see from where the white car is, there's the balloon going up at 150 feet. Uh, and that's this shot that they're saying it's going to be visible from. Um, and then they did typically did two simulations, which is if they do not do an evergreen type of a tower, this is the way it would look. And now, obviously, that's not there right now. OK, it's, this is uh, photoshopped in here. And then the next one should be an artificial tree, right? Uh, right there would be. So this is what they did throughout the pictures. OK, so if it was visible, uh, they went and took a look and then they shot 
uh, saying that, okay, it will be visible, and this is what it would look like with a tower without evergreens on there, and this is what it would be looking like with a tower with evergreens. So this is what they did. So that's a pretty complete report. They went out about a mile, I spoke to the guy who was from Rhode Island, and uh, he took all these pictures and went on different locations and that. Uh, I had suggested it to him that he gets out on the LaRue Ro La Road. Obviously, the development, that was a no-brainer. So, I mean, that, was, that wasn't even a question whether he was going to take pictures inside there. Uh, but the next one would have been when uh, he went out a little bit further out to LaRue Road uh, and the surrounding area. And he told me he shot about a, a mile on out. So, uh, so these are different shots. You should take a look at these. Uh, you can look at them on the web. They tell you here, balloon not visible balloon visible, and then you're going to see what it looks like with a uh, 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 tower without a uh, evergreens on there and a tower with evergreens. If you go back to, let's go back to the beginning, what the board has to take into consideration here is, so you can see here uh, the balloon, they, it is a summer skate. There is a lot of trees, you know, so there's a, a bunch of, uh, and especially along, I think it's called Juniper, I'm not sure, is that, people are shaking their heads, yes. So it's Juniper running down the right side. They're the ones that this will kind of be in their backyard. So uh, there are a lot of tall trees in there now. Uh, and so a summer scape, it's not going to be obviously seen too much, uh, except for this piece right here from this house. And again, I know this is, uh, I think he labeled each one which house the number it was and so on and so forth. And then again, he came up and did this. So so just for the board, this is what he's done with the, the uh, photo uh, shot in there. So, uh, and his photo analysis of what's going on up there. So. If I may also point one thing out to you, sir. Um, we've done numerous of these where we've done the fake pine tree. In this location, it's 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 going to be up to the recommendation of this board uh, what we do with this. But a lot of times, the extra bulk from making this artificial tree can have a negative effect and actually make the poles stick out a little bit more versus a skinny gray pole. And all of a sudden you've got something that's a little bushier, you know, several feet out on both sides. Um, I mean, it's a, it's an aesthetic question. Thus it doesn't impact our functionality, but you know, when you're taking into account the visual impact, you may want to think about that. All right. I mean, we're going to have to take that consideration. They, they show pictures from even further out, you know, and what it's going to look like well, on the road and some of the other spots. In that. So, um, uh, so that's the photo analysis in that. I just also just wanted to show the board real quick. I took two pictures. Uh, one is we've had a long-term uh, cell tower on Nancy Lane off of LaRue. It's up on the top of the hill. So this is kind of what an evergreen. This is an older one. Uh, the others might even be a little bit different. Uh, I have to say I shot this from Nancy Lane. There are houses right in that general area. Uh, and they, this is a Verizon tower up in that area. Someone else, T-Mobile, someone might be Colo on this one here. Uh, and then uh, I shot this one. This is from a, uh, now this is real. This is not Photoshop. This is the Pine Island uh, Scenic Farms Golf Course. Uh, it's a little golf course up there with a great driving range. Anybody likes to play golf. Uh, so I and shot this. Shank one to the right. Yeah, the picture, yeah I hit right. the picture, right? So I took this. This is off in the distance. But this is kind of almost like a little bit of a similar situation here. You can see the tall trees, and you can see the way a tower is sticking up. Uh, this is quite a big tower, too, I'm assuming. I, I, I didn't ride up there. I'm not exactly sure how to get there. I think it's actually in New Jersey. Uh, or Clint, you know where it is. Is it Jersey? Pine Island. It's, on the farm. it's in Pine yeah, Island. It's so it's up above the golf course, right? Yes, it's, um, it's about 125 feet tall. Right. So this is, what, this is what a real one, not simulated, would look like with the trees uh with the you know trees that are 60 70 feet tall so this is what it would look like so this is what the board has taken into consideration a little bit you know which one we may think uh that would look better in that area so um al you did a report and i'm gonna go and see what else we need in there so hold on just a second then we're gonna turn it over to the engineers that are here clinton horizon but yeah. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I did review a letter from uh, SHIPA, and uh, in that regard, they had uh, not they had suggested a balloon test and a visual assessment, uh, which uh, they didn't know was being. Played.
playing about it yesterday. And uh, so that was uh, something that they had made note of. And uh, uh, the board has to review, as Don said, the acceptability of the visual issues that you've seen. Or if you want more, you should ask for it. Uh, we reviewed the geotechnical work and foundation, which were sent to us, and that appeared to be acceptable. We reviewed the diesel engine that they sent to us, or generator, I'm sorry. My only question is, uh, uh, how much diesel storage and where? Is it in the generator or outside the generator? Uh, which plant? I really didn't see that. It might have been there, but I didn't see it. Uh, the other is uh, uh, we had discussions with representatives of the project. Uh, I called them after they called me, talking about possible decommissioning bond. And I believe this would be in the contract with the town and not the planning board issue. Uh, that's why I copied Scott Bonasak on this, because he would be preparing that uh, agreement. Uh, there should be an escrow for uh, supervision in the contracts of the town, and the endangered species report uh, would be required from their engineers to us. And, uh, you know, board comments, and that's pretty much it. So you're going to have to do some kind of an just see if there's any kind of endangered species. I guess the mapper shows a, it showed up on the map. It showed a possible uh, up. It was brown up there, so that means it's there's potential. Just the word potential up in there. So you're gonna have to get his, somebody. his uh, feedback has already been referred on. For oh, okay, so it has. so we'll get back to you with the oil tank and the information on the endangered species. So what happened with Shippo was Shippo called me, uh, sent an email out out to me. Someone. Uh, sent them the public hearing notice. Uh, I don't know somebody in the public, I'm assuming, sent them. And that's why she called me. I had sent her the site plan. Uh, and then they came back with uh, this. Okay, this is from Shippo. Um, her name was, I forget her name. Gabriella Sabata Mora. So, uh, so this came back from her. So basically, she did not know uh, at that point in time. We didn't know when any kind of uh, the balloon test wasn't done. We just got on, I would say, Thursday or Friday of last week. We got the photo analysis. So we have not submitted anything back to Shippo. I guess I, I guess I don't know if we're obligated or not to do that or what. I, I don't know. Have I seen one? Or I don't, when did it come? Uh, Last night, right? Was that the one? No, this one I remember that's just the ship one. Okay. That was so the mapper did show archaeological, so, so it should go to ship. Well it went to ship. Yeah, so they didn't have any kind of archaeological thing here at all. So basically what they're saying is since it goose pond starts probably five hundred feet from their prop from the four acres that they've leased, and then goes all the way uh down Bulma Road. And then across Bulma Road, all the way over to 17M, in the bloom near the uh, Craigville Road intersection. So it's approximately about 2,000 acres. Uh, so she was concerned with about 660 acres of possible viewshed. Now she she realizes that they talk about you know the need. We're going to talk about the cell phone need up here and that. But she talks about the need versus you know whatever we can do to mitigate whatever we can up in there. Now she's talking about, I don't know where they're getting this 660 acres from. They're telling you about a third of the park. Uh, I think if you go up on um, uh, Goose Pond Mountain, obviously, if you get up high, because as they took some photo shots on um, Debbie Court up in that area in Sugarloaf Mountain Road, but you'll see how small everything looks when you get up to that point up on the top there. Uh, but I, I imagine when you get up in that height up in that area that you're, you're going to see it. Uh, down on Bulmo Road, you don't see it. You're not going to see it. You can't even see the tower. You can see it from the intersection of Bulmo and LaRue. You can slightly see the balloon up on the top there. You're going to see it in there. Um, and uh, I think the majority of the park is, is in a lower section, and I don't think you're going to really see it, you know, as it goes along. It borders Bulmo Road and LaRue Road uh, and 17M. That's the park itself. And it crosses over and goes up the mountain up to where this tower is going to be. So that's the part. So we'll have to just take this into consideration a little bit. They talk about the tree design, evergreens or whatever we're going to do here. 
you know, they talk about that in here in their letter. So everybody should have gotten this. That was sent out. Yeah, it was sent out. And, uh, we'll make sure you get a copy. I, I probably did. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure yeah. I'm yeah. Not, I, I don't remember. But I may have sent it out last night. Everybody, so, so we do yeah. need, uh, so, they, so they didn't find any kind of archaeological, or I don't know if they looked at that or not, but they didn't find it. They said the only thing they were really concerned with possibly the visual impacts, but they also uh, understand the need for the uh, cell service and so on and so forth. So it's a balance, they said. And they're asking us to take that into consideration. Everybody has to report. Everybody can see the report, look at it. And, uh, you know, so they did a thoughtful conversation about the proposed monopole size, height, appearance is incurred. If a stealth structure is recommended, tree density, type of tree, seasonal changes, all this stuff. So read it and we'll, there'll be further discussions as far as that goes. So um, what else do we have in here? Um, showed the couple different pictures things like that so so before i turn it over to the the experts that are two experts sitting here i hope they're experts um so uh first of all this board is governed uh first of all we have to do things and obey the laws of the united states the town of chester the state of new york all that we're all you know we have to obey all the laws here and we have to follow those you know uh, sometimes we have no discretions in that. So in 1996, don't ask me why it hasn't been updated, but there was a called the Telecommunications Act of 1996. And the reason that happened was that the federal government realized that cell phones were growing uh, by leaps and bounds and that nobody and no town wanted them. So therefore, they had to take a step out and they said that uh, there's going to be certain rules that planning boards, town boards, and everybody have to follow. So that's what they're going to have to follow. So, so a couple of things is that the uh, applicant, and they're going to talk about this tonight, needs to one discuss a need in the area, all right? Uh, and they and they they're going to draw like a circle out. They've done all this. It all shows out the need, uh, and what how that area is going to be serviced by this tower. So they're going to show you that, right? The other thing the government came out with, they basically forbid the planning board to take into consideration the RF factor as long as they re they come, uh, it, whether it be equal, Clint, you can correct me if I'm not wrong, equal or less than the FDA uh, uh, Food and Drug Administration's rules as far as the RF of a project, yeah, right? CFCC, CFCC's rules. Or FCC's rules, yes. not the FDA, All right? Uh, so the FCC, so it's, they have to, those are the two major things they have to do. Now we can take in, this board does have some leeway on aesthetics and, and things like that. We, we have leeway on that part. But those two things that are important, right? Uh, how did the cell tower get positioned up, uh, you know, up on the top, up in there? Uh, two reasons. One is uh, people here who are going to speak tonight are going to probably tell me I'm wrong, but that there's no need on top. I know myself that I rode around up there the other day and I know people live up there and we have one bar up there. So there's a need for, and then well, it stretches all the way down into Lake Hill Farms and they'll explain all this later on. I can't get too much into that. Uh, so um, the town of Chester leased this site for the positioning of a cell tower, right? Uh, so someone's gonna say to us, well, why did we pick this? Well, the planning board didn't pick this, right? This was something that, uh, that ARX Wireless came to the board, did the right thing. I'm not saying right or wrong thing. I'm talking about submitted an application <clears throat> has to go through. You can see everything that we require and need here, uh, and will still need even in the future and all that. So that's how they got here. Okay, the town of Chester signed a lease. Uh, I don't have a copy of the lease. We don't really get into the legalities. That's really the town lawyer. Oh, we have a copy. Of the lease. We have a copy of the lease. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, this town attorney sent to us well. Right. Is there anything we should note on the lease or anything like that? No. 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 So there is a formal lease agreement signed on this project. There's another one that I'm sure other people are going to be happy about in the future. Uh, that's another one that's not in front of the board. There's been no activity or anything like that on that one. Uh, so there were two leases signed. That's how they're here. Uh, so there is code in the town of Chester may, may say, well, you shouldn't position towers here and there and so on and so forth. But that's off the table because the town of Chester said to this board that uh, this is where tower is going to go. All right. As long as it can pass secret buster, which and, and also pass the federal rules 
that they have to uh, uh, play by. So that's that's the rules we have to play, and that's what we have to take in consideration as a board. So, and that's important, all right? So, all right. So at this point, Verizon want to go first, or you want to, do, or, or Clint, you want to, Clint, you want to take the lead? Uh, I, I could queue it up and then. Uh, so which one do you want me to bring up? The one, the RF document, yeah, or the RF document would be good. Um, that has some of the. Doesn't that have some of the areas that aren't serviced and it's going to be serviced and that, all that that's stuff? That's correct. It's got both. So is that the exhibit? The this one. It's that, the it's the big exhibit. That's it's the right. big it's guy, right? In which it. is. But well, let's see if it's going to really come to it in a second. But I'll I'll just go over what I went through real briefly. <laughs> And Do you know I'll what follow. page or anything? It's, it's 130 pages. So Yeah, that's, well, I'm going to have him go through, hit the highlights. So I'm going to have, because he put together this report. Um, right. The few things I did go through on this, I did, uh, I did review their needs analysis that they had for the site. And as they're, they're going to go through, because I believe he has to do it anyway. He's got to present it to the board for the actual needs. He just can't go through the point by saying I reviewed it. He's got to show it. Um, you know, it's needed for capacity and also cover coverage, but they it's primarily a capacity site that they've got it in there for, even though you indicated coverage and there is coverage that this new site's supposed to provide. Uh, there was no indication of the additional sites that they're working on for the area. It's only, they only really showed this new one that's there. I did ask for the additional sites, but uh, you know, they, they stayed focused on only the, this existing site that they applied for. Um, I did ask about the FAA um you know coming into that you know for you know just to check to see if we're in violation of any faa rules or make sure that they did do the right filing for that uh they did the question i had is that they put it at 150 feet i asked for you know but the top of the tower is really 154. the small technicality i was led to believe that they're going to rerun the um the faa report at 154 feet well i, I was told that was going to be done uh, it, it's a it's minor thing it shouldn't have any real impact it's just get the thing done right. Um, the other thing that was asked about was um, co-location and co-location is other additional wireless carriers that would come onto the site because ARX, what do they call it? Oh, it's ARCs? It's ARCs, like, yeah. ARCs, okay. Um, their, job, their mission is to lease, get as many co-locators and many other tenants on that site as possible. So I went, okay, how many are you gonna put on it? And that's why they put on the drawing, you know, three additional carriers that are going to be put onto it, you know, as such. And that was really one of the quests is to have them identify that. And they, you know, they put that on the drawing. You know, I'm not sure that any load analysis was done or anything else like that, assuming that the tower can support everything. Um, you know, that part I can't speak to. You know, I, I, I don't know. And did ask about an interference, you know, they provided a letter about uh, interference with regards to mutual interference, or rather interference caused from the site onto other communications uh, facilities. And they left out the first responders. So I, you know, I can't help it. I'm a firefighter. So I just went get it in there. You know, and, you know, the last letter that they put out had it included saying first, you know, only first responder systems, which also includes the police department and DPW, which wasn't on there, just to say, you know, if there's a problem there, you know, um, it's got to get resolved. What I was unclear is, which I think the board can do, is just say that Verizon, um, or it could be ARX, but one of these has to take lead as to who to call if there's an interference problem. Because otherwise it's going to be an I said it, he said it, she said it thing. We've got to have some person in control for that. Um, the last one is I looked at the EMF report, which is the uh, RF, it's referred to as the RF radiation. It comes back to the uh, Telecom Act of 96, and uh, that was run by SiteSafe, and that was on a separate report that was, I don't believe that was, well, that's in one of the exhibits that's in here that goes it's, along. It's part of the application. Yeah. No, I know it's part of the app now that was in there. And they covered every frequency band that was there uh, that Verizon has a license for, uh, which is more than the frequency bands that uh, is Verizon's going to indicate that they're going to have on the site. But they, but they included everything. Um, and uh, the report run by SiteSafe was good, and it showed, you know, they weren't in compliance, you know, of um, you know, the FA, FCC rules with regards to EMF compliance. Um, 
you know, when we have a new co-locator put onto it, so like, you know, AT&T comes on, they have to rerun the report. You know, like AT&T will have to run the report to show their impact plus Verizon's impact. They have to do, it has to be done every time. Plus also the carriers have to do it on a yearly basis. They have to show compliance every year. Typically, they don't, nobody chases that down, but they're supposed to supply that on a yearly basis for compliance. And typically, you know, as a normal thing, it's just one of those things is just forgotten because it has to be followed up on. And nobody gets praised for following up on a report like that. They don't, they don't submit it, nobody asks. Uh, all right. And I think, you know, for right now, Wasif has got you know, quite a few plots. He, he's going to show some capacity plots, which we've got right here. He's showing on, you know, just there's for both the Neptune and also the Silvertail site. He's got some plots that show uh, certain capacity metrics that they use to determine whether a, site, a cell site's in compliance uh, with their capacity requirements to serve customers. And he's got some other plots later on that are going to show for coverage that's going to attempt to show a need for why the site's needed for coverage, you know, being able to support for coverage. The, the most glaring piece is that it shows a need for capacity. There's a capacity need. There is some sections that they need for coverage, but the capacity site is really the driving point that's behind this, that they need it uh, to support customers. And I think it's better for you to go through this report and I can, you know, that would be easier. But we did go back just as a point. Uh, we spent um, a couple hours on the phone going through his report, and I, you know, I was, you know, it was it was a very healthy and constructive conversation that we had. That was back and forth, and you know, it was, I, I was pushing him, but you know, you know, in all fairness, came back, responded, answered the questions that I had, the written written questions I had, came back to him. And, you know, in all fairness, that, you know, we did answer them. Uh, it doesn't mean that there are other questions that you could ask, but at least the ones that I asked, he came back with. Okay, thanks. Good evening, everyone. Um, again, my name is Masif Sharif, and I'm representing uh, Verizon Wireless RF Engineering Department here. I'm the one actually who put this report together. Um, so let we're going to ask you to speak up a little. Just be, uh, sure, sure. No, you, you yep. be broadcast okay. out to the public, and the public needs to hear you, and the folks in the back of the room, especially All right. like better you, now. Don't need to hear you. Yeah, uh, we, I'll try to speak. Just that mic, if you want to make it up higher, so you don't have to bend over. Like, yeah. okay. where's Michelle? Right here. I'm just making sure you got it, or do you need me? Uh, you got it. Well, go. yeah, better. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm here to walk you through the report uh, to justify the need of this site. Actually, this is a dual purpose uh, macro site. Uh, primary objectives are to increase capacity and improve improve uh, mid-band coverage in the and around the project area. So if you can scroll up, if I can. I'll walk them through okay. each and every. Can you? Tell me, like pages, or we've got 104 pages here. So. Uh, if you can just um, go, go to the beginning, go, go I'll ask you. Want to go with the one where do you want me to go? Um, beginning of this um, exhibit A. Exhibit A? Yes. Is that up this way? Yes. More? Yep. Yeah, you can stop here. So, this is actually um, the overview of the project location. Um, the circle is our search area, and these are the neighboring sites. So, the site in the west. Um, Neptune site and um, in the uh, West location, Silvertail. These are the two sites actually which are in need of capacity relief. I believe it's better now. So basically, what is driving the need of this site is number one, coverage, number two, capacity. Um, when we say capacity, we mean um, mid band uh, coverage. And when we say coverage, we mean low band coverage. So uh, let me try to be quick, but I want you to completely understand. Um, so Verizon is primarily using two different bands, low band frequencies and um, mid band frequencies. Um, we do not use high band frequency in this area. So low band frequencies, they travel far and we use them for coverage purpose and mid band frequencies, they have got more bandwidth. We use them for capacity, but the drawback is higher frequencies travel. Uh, less than uh, our low band frequencies. So uh, what's driving the capacity need? Um, 
we already have coverage, but from the low band, low band has very limited bandwidth, 25 megahertz from each band and all different carriers, they share the low band. So we, we have like five megahertz or 10 megahertz from low band. So we have coverage in these areas, but from low band. And um, if you scroll down, I can show you the coverage plots. So how we evaluate um, the capacity um, of a sector, we use three different metrics. And uh, even if one of them actually exceeds um, site is in capacity need and uh, customers actually, they will um, observe um, degraded service. So actually here I am going to show you FD, uh, v which is forward data volume, ASEU, and average uh, uh, connected user, average AC. So not all these KPIs have to exceed. If one of them, again, if one of them is exceeding 100% utilization, um, site is actually degrading service and people may not be able to make calls or data uh, services. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. Why don't you just try to explain you know, what a ASVU is and a few of the, the three metrics you used. Okay. And because they're, they're very easy if you just quickly explain what they saw. What they okay. So, okay. So these three metrics actually are FDB is uh, forward data volume, the whole volume or data data site is carrying. ASEU is average schedule eligible user. It actually tells you how far you are taking traffic from. And then last one is pretty simple, average active connection, how many users are connected to the site. So, so the three are, you know, the right. users you've got on the site at, at a given moment, how many different cell phones are being In used. more generic, yeah. The, the other piece is how much data is being consumed from the site from all the different users. And the other is how, how well it's able to actually schedule or be able to make resources available or a cell phone to use. Right. And you know that those are the three things that they're trying to measure. And right. That's so that's in the midst of everything. That's really what they're trying to show. Uh, that's correct. I, I'm trying to be more general because probably not everybody here can understand uh, the technical they're terms. Not, they're not familiar with it. It's not yeah. a matter of not understanding yeah. it. It's just a matter of it's, so, you know, throwing some terms out to people that really haven't heard this before. I'll try my best to be more generic or like claim in term. So first one is, um, um, first plot is uh, Neptune Alpha. Um, here actually we are trying to show that our first metric FDB, it's exceeding 100% limit. The Neptune site is where? This is one of the sites we are trying to offload. So that's the one on Neptune Drive up in the Tanner Monroe? Right. Up on the hill. Up right. The so this is, this is one of these sites actually we are trying to offload. The second one is Silvertail. And here you can clearly see that um, FDV matrix is exceeding 100% for low band. Um, even after trying traffic balancing between two bands, um, it's still exceeding and the mid band coverage is not helping. Second thing I'm showing here is ASEU. Again, low band is exceeding 100% and mid-band is not helping because site is really far, uh, two miles from the project location. Silvertail site is the water tank. That right, I'm getting the there. The water tank that was here in the last, yeah. at the last tour. Is the water the tank on King's Estate, right. which again is a long way. Second there. site is um, Silvertail. If you move um, to the next slide, yep, you're there. And you see it's also exceeding. It's a, comparatively, it's a short site. Um, so here we see mid-band is also taking some coverage and um, traffic and it's exceeding 100% uh, limit. So basically this is the capacity need. Um, we have five, uh, at least four or five sites, uh, first year neighbors around this project location, but these two sites actually are primarily covering the project location and are in need of capacity relief. So that's why we are talking about this site. We do not want this report to be a 100 page report. Uh, apart from this, for coverage need, actually, um, if you scroll down to the next slide, these are the legends. If um, give me, if you allow me one minute, I'll show you actually how it works. Um, so green, actually, green color is showing uh, coverage um, above NEG 85. 
and then second tier coverage is yellow which is from neg 85 to neg 95 dbm dbm is a unit to measure rf energy and this is a sample this isn't actually the area i'm trying to explain actually uh, how we read it yep yep sorry so third tier coverage um is the worst one actually orange color which is uh between neg 95 neg 105 so this is only outdoor coverage. If we see outdoor coverage is bad, indoor coverage uh, will be worse, even worse, because I meant with penetration losses, building losses, we can expect either a worse coverage or no coverage at all. So if you move to the next slide. All right, next. Next one. Yep, next. Um, if you zoom out a little bit. This is perfect. So here um, we, again, this is actually uh, not related to coverage. It's showing um, capacity relief that new site is going to provide. Um, I'm taking you back to uh, capacity point of view. So this yellow color actually it's showing, is showing the service area of Neptune Alpha sector. Project location is totally covered by this um, alpha sector of Neptune site. If you move to the next site, you will see we have added a new site here, uh, Walton Park. And the green service area actually is coming from Walton Park. So we can clearly see that this green area actually it's reducing yellow service area and red service area, which is silver tail alpha sector. So this slide actually is showing that this new site is going to help the two congested sectors and for coverage um if you move to the next slide this is our low band coverage and we clearly see that residential area is covered um, by neptune site which is already congested we saw that utilization was exceeding 100 percent and uh, there are few roads um which are in second tier or third tier coverage you see these roads are in yellow or orange color if you move to the next site, um, slide, um, we will see when we add this new site, Walton Park. Um, this is actually improving um, coverage. It's making first year coverage on these roads and in this re residential area in the northeast of the project location. So this is from low band. You do not see much coverage improvement um, because low band coverage is already there from the neighboring sites, which we are trying to offload. Next thing is mid-band coverage. This is the main thing, actually. So it, these red areas, these are not going to be covered, or what, what? what's the different colors here? OK, so um, these different colors actually are showing different um, coverage tiers. So green is where you have the best coverage from this site, uh, neg 85 and above. Second tier is yellow, where you will be having from neg 85 to neg 95, second best coverage tier. Third one is um, orange. Uh, which is uh, from NAG 95 to NAG 105. And anything below NAG 105 it will be unreliable. So that's why we are not showing any coverage. And this will be no coverage area. So, so which are the no coverage areas? For so anything that's in white here, it's right. no coverage. So uh, this is actually a good point to show that even with this tower height of 150, we still see that there will be there will still be some areas with no coverage so the red is not getting good coverage red is um third tier coverage outdoor coverage will be okay indoor coverage will be spotty will be what um like unreliable kind of coverage <laughs> yeah okay all right next slide yep next this is actually our mid-band coverage. So um, this is um, from our capacity band. And uh, if you scroll up, actually, yep, yep, you're right. Yeah, this is. So we see that. Um, can you zoom out? Zoom out. Yep, a little bit. I can see the headers actually. More. More. A little more. Yeah. I want to see the header actually. Right. So this is our existing 2100 uh, coverage plot. And that's what we refer to as mid-band, right? Right. 2100 is our mid-band. This is our capacity band. We see that Walton Park area is being served by Neptune. And if we move to the next slide, when we add new, new um, site, Walton Park, 
uh, we are going to get new best server in this area, which is in green uh, coverage from proposed site. And if you move to the next slide. So here we clearly see that our capacity band is not able to take traffic from this area. Why? Because um, the coverage is in third tier. So that's what I was trying to explain. If outdoor coverage is in third tier, um, indoor coverage will be worse or there will be no indoor coverage. So that's what we are trying to show that without this site, the whole residential area on the roads um, around the project location, either we do not have mid-band coverage or if we have it, it's in third tier. If you move to the next slide, you will see that with the addition of this new site, um, the whole project location and the surrounding area will be a, having first year mid band coverage, which is our capacity band. All right, next, uh, if you move to the next slide. So basically in this slide, what we are trying to show is this, these are the areas where this new site will be primarily the dominant server and carrying traffic from. So this is the area which will be benefited. So this is going to be the footprint of this site. So that's all I had. If uh, any. Go back one slide uh, from the end, just to back up one more. Yeah, that's an indication and you said that you are going to be coming back asking for more sites at some point uh, to meet to improve the uh, your performance in your mid band coverage mm -hmm. uh, in order to meet the capacity. So we are, you know, from that, you know, it, it's a clear indication that there is additional need still, still by Verizon for the general area. Right. So basically, this is something what we call mid band densification because mid band frequency bands are actually not able to travel far. So with the passage of time, when we have more data need, we try to add more sites. We try to integrate more sites into the network um, because these are capacity bands. And even with the full power, full allowed power, we can make everything green. So um, this is actually how it works in future. I um, mean, maybe in next five, 10 years, if um, this site is in congestion, probably we are going to need maybe more site. This is actually how it's working because, I mean, we have been previously covering this area with Neptune site, but now it's in congestion. We have only low band that's covering here, and uh, everybody knows that with the passage of time, we are in need of data, and we need more data, and our sectors are being congested. Midband is not helping, so the only solution is midband densification. All right, thank you. All right, uh, so I guess we could open the public hearing now. I guess we're ready to move. What else? Well, on, on the uh, plots that you had, at least on, just if you go back, you know, just on the tower picture from the co-location, as you know, the C band, the C band that was listed, that's, um, that's not the mid band. That's a high band. C band is still, is still considered maybe mid band. You know, I don't remember that was something I was talking about. Um, so, mid band is where you did phones. Like 119, 135. And C band is 3.7. Okay, so it's mid band. All right. High band is when you did that. You're not so close to that. And right now, the initial pieces are putting in the, um, even all the plots are being done for 4G, which is LP. And that's some of the antennas that you've got placed that are the together. On further on the exhibits, they showed a couple new, you know, different antennas, and they were dealing with um, oh, it was the C band. It was another frequency band that they have not used yet in, in this area, and they're planning on doing that for five to offer five G services. The, the rub's going to be is that they're not really rub, but the higher the mid band frequencies they're having don't really cover that far. So that they're going to be looking for more more sites, you know, in the near future. You know, you're going to. Yeah, you can't be. If you know, I care, that's can be carried. Well, yeah, so so it's just saying yeah. you. Yeah, you're going to. And the low band that he's referring to is the 700 megahertz and the standard cellular 850 that you know we all started with cellular cell phones. 
that was the low band. The 700 is the one that was from the digital television phase when we got rid of, you know, the big race to get rid of the digital boxes off of, you know, for digital television. And that was the band that was opened up for everybody to use that. And that's where Verizon picked that up. And it got a lot, lot better coverage. So they were able to get a large coverage range, but they don't have the capacity for offering you know, a lot of data. But, but it's good, you know, you can get coverage out of it. And it's got a large, it, it's the best band for providing coverage, but not for capacity. So they've gone up in frequency. And, but unfortunately, when you go up in frequency, the size of the site, how far it covers, shrinks, which is going to lead to them, you know, in the near future, having to do some type of, um, some additional capacity sites are going to be coming just to deal with that. And that that's going to be what's going to happen. So it's not going to be a one time you put it in and forget, you know, it's, some of the things have to be addressed. They do have a need for it, but they're going to also be coming back for additional sites in the future. But but near future is, I don't, I don't think I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if you've got a crystal ball, but it'll tell you one. But it's going to be within ten years you're going to be back here. That's if you're successful. I am not anticipating anything anytime soon because I'm in this new bank's event. Um, it's going to have the same footprint as of AWS, and capacity is literally um, eight times. So Kimberly mm -hmm. predicts the technology changes over the next few years. Uh, I don't know if you change things from. You know, the hot, you know, from what initially was deployed in 2015, that's been scrapped. You know, now we're going to a different thing. I, I mean, things, experiments are tried, and they fail, and then we go back to different things. So anyway, we got this project, and we probably want to hear it public. It's okay. I don't think anyone's really concerned about what's going right. to happen in the future, just, <laughs> just between now and 9.30. All right, so <laughs> at this point, let the record reflect that the proper notices were sent by mail, and based on times our record? Yes, they were. I just received them. Okay. Uh, and again, this is not a question and answer session. We may answer some questions for anyone who wants to speak tonight. Okay. Uh, so before I open up the uh, public hearing, we uh, sent out to everyone. Tracy sent an email out today. Uh, everyone should have gotten it. Okay. You can take a look at it. And uh, it's on the website. Yeah, it's on the website. You can ask any questions you want. So, all right. At this time, I'm going to open the public hearing. Uh, just please raise your hand and uh, give us your name and your uh, address. Tom. Uh, Tom Becker, 163 Lee Lehigh Avenue here in Chester. Uh, for the last two and a half years, I've been working with Al, and we're uh, creating another source of water supply for Walt Lake States in the vicinity of, of this tower. And I just wanted to mention to Al that we need to coordinate for any underground that comes off of this site out towards the roadway that we coordinate it so that we make sure we have room for you know, everything that we're going to have to run also. So if we can work together on that with anything that might come through, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Are we still drilling wells on the top? We're going to drill another one within the next few weeks. We have one that's 60 gallons a minute. We're trying to get a second one. Cool. So we're getting close. Okay. So Al, you'll make sure that gets taken, you know, we got to take that into consideration when your rope coming in and that they're, they're trying to find new water that's a, Bad shape up on the top here, so they're trying to look at. So the, what, what he's saying is, we've got to make sure that you know whatever you do is got to take in consideration what they may do. Also. Well, we'll make sure that it's clearly delineated on the plans exactly where our paving is going to go. Okay. So, so then we don't have a mix up for a situation where we okay. might we might try and put a facility there also and water quality. So we just have to make sure that everything's coordinated. So we we have the room we need, you have the room you need. Right, but. It, um, I mean, we're operating off of the easement, yeah. and it's specified where our utility is going to go in the easement. So, look and see if you could just if you can stay outside the easement, then we won't have any kind of problem. Okay, we'll take care of that. So, sure. All right, anybody else? Go ahead. My name is Larry Warshower. I live at 72 Southside Drive. In Monroe, uh, I spoke to the attorney the last time. He wasn't aware of the basketball court and the playground location, and I made him aware. But based on the drawings he was showing, the nearest house is 0.15 miles from the tower, but the playground is now then a <coughs> quarter of a mile from the tower. Okay, and I'm going to send all of you an email 
about the health effects of this radiation on people, particularly kids. But the second thing is, Supervisor Johnson told me something different last week. He told me that, yes, he did sign a lease that gave them the right to use town land, but it was you, the board, the planning board, had the power still to decide where that tower is going to be. And I know, given the politics, it's very difficult to stop them from doing what they want to do. But it's a quarter of a mile away from where the kids are going to grow up playing. And it's 1 15th, 0.15 miles from the nearest house. <laughs> and what I asked the supervisor was, couldn't you have put the tower further deeper into the woods so it wouldn't be so near this playground? Because I go to that playground, but I see the parents bringing their kids to the playground. They're going to grow up at that playground. All the people in that hill are going to grow up at that playground. And this thing is a quarter of a mile away. I will email you the health effects. And my point is not to stop them. It doesn't seem like it's possible to really stop them, because you're right. That law is a powerful law. But Johnson told me that the lease he gave them gave them the power to use the town land. But you, as a board, could decide where it's going to be. So I will email you information about this, and then you can respond. Okay, well, you can think about it. It's your conscience. It's not my conscience. So I'll just email you that because he was not aware. This gentleman, he was not aware about the playground. He did not know, but I knew. That's why I want to talk to him. Anyway, so now you know what my concerns are. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Michelle. Yeah. I am Lydia Gladros. In the opening statement by ARX, Mr. Ryan stated it was the town of Chester that approached ARX in the rising. This would indicate that there is no urgent need for this cell tower. Okay. Thanks for the comment. Anybody else? That's all I have. Okay, so at this point in time, I would recommend to the board, because we don't have all the 100% of everything in, that we would leave the uh, public hearing open uh, to the next meeting. So it would be a motion uh, to continue to the right, September meeting. Right. right, so someone want to make, a, make motion a motion to continue to, to the next meeting? Second by Justin. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so this is coming <laughs> up to open. We're not re-noticing. I don't know if people in the back got notices or or I got wind of this or whatever, but uh, there won't be any new notices of everything, anything new, please follow our website, follow our documents, our agendas, uh, and it will be on the, I'm assuming you wanna come back on the September 7th agenda. So, yes, sir. Okay, and you're working on the endangered species report? Yeah, we have several follow-up items. Okay, all right, that's fine, so. All right, Thank you very much. all right, thanks. Thanks, everybody, but thanks. We'll talk to you soon, All right? Okay. It's quarter to nine, uh, nine o'clock. Maybe we should quit here now. Oh, that's right. Ross is in the back. Yes. All right. Broccoli patch. Ross, come on up. Ross, let me just bring up the Plans, where do you want to go? Uh, yeah, sure, plans. Okay. All right, go ahead. Tell me it's smaller, bigger, whatever you want to do. All right, good evening. Ross Swingelovitz, Engineering and Surveying Properties here on behalf of Broccoli Patch LLC for their application for the... Uh, restaurant, distillery, and catering facility. Uh, we were back in front of you, um, or in front of you back in early June, um, had made some uh, additional revisions to the plan, um, including the addition of a lighting plan, which had not previously been provided uh, as part of the new submission, and a landscape plan, um, along with some minor modifications based on comments from the board and from your consultants. We also have made submissions to the Department of Public Works, uh, who have responded back recently with technical comments regarding the application um, that we are going to schedule a meeting with to discuss. Um, 
DEC endangered species was a request to the board. We had sent that on June 15th uh, to the DEC. They did respond um, last week regarding looking for additional information um, on the potential for bog turtle habitat. Um, our wetlands biologist uh, is preparing that information and will be uh, submitting that to the DEC as soon as it's available. Um, we've also done some um, pressure testing uh, and fire flow testing on the water line. Um, as you remember, there's a water line coming down from Creamy Pond through uh, the uh, former Lyceum property into this site uh, and ending at uh, Kings Highway uh, as part of this proposal and as part of our commitment to the town board uh, for water service to the property. Uh, fire flow testing has been completed and was satisfactory. We're going to be preparing a report, uh, which we actually have the report. We'll be finalizing the report and application and getting it to Al to review. This would be a public main because um, the town wants us to be able to have that access and service uh, the town property as well as our property. So the town would have to have Al review it and authorize the supervisor to sign the application. So that should be coming to you shortly. Um, also, uh, the board asked us, uh, or your consultant asked us to su submit to uh, Moodna Sewer District regarding our sewer connection. Um, there was an initial submission made. Um, John O'Rourke from Lankin Tully, as our engineer, had a couple comments. Uh, we also will need to reply to that. Um, I understand that the board is going to be having a, a uh, field visit with one of the neighboring properties. We're perfectly fine with that. Um, if the board would like to come to visit our property um, at any time, let us know. We can schedule something, and we'd be glad to meet you there to show you around if there's anything uh, you think you may need to see. Uh, we do have Al's comments uh, for this evening. Um, the first five are regarding the um, outside agencies, uh, which I just kind of updated the board on regarding uh, the status of those. Um, in regard to the review comments, um, I wanted to just go through them briefly. Al noted about changing the note for the uh, bat protection. So that's the Indiana bat. Al, I thought that was October <coughs> one and that the long-eared bat was <coughs> November one. But I can confirm that with the DEC. Oh, they they move them both to November one? That must, so. be, must be recent because we just – did that last year on the October one. Uh, we are t talking to the biologists, obviously, regarding the bog turtle, so we'll confirm all that and make any changes that are necessary. Soil tests were performed. I'll get Al's uh, office out there for the infiltration chamber. Uh, we had very good soils testing. Uh, uh, what would you like to see, Al? Deep test pit and then uh, inf one infiltration test or something with like that? Yeah, that would be sufficient. Okay. We've been finding that it's, you know, the young pilot, the uh not a problem uh handicap signs they're probably hard to see they were on the plan they're at the by the stone wall um i'll point those out uh as part of our next submission uh, cut sheets, you just want them submitted out, cut sheets for the lights. We do have the spec call out, but you want to see what they look like. We'll, we'll give you those uh, attached to the next response letter. Have not seen any comments from Karen. I know she was here earlier. She just got it not too long ago, and I think it's best that she's coming on the site visit. You're going to come on the site yep. visit, too. Uh, that I think the board comes on the site visit, and then Karen... You know, she's going to see it from two different angles, right? Uh, she's going to see what it looks like on the site, but we also want to see what it may look like from the opposite side. Okay, so so she'll comment right after she gets out there. Okay, so. very good. Uh, signage to be detailed. You're wondering if they're going to have any proposed signage for their business signage, you're saying? Okay. I don't know the answer to that. Um, is there a separate sign approval? Is it part of the planning board or is it yeah, a building department function? Plan. Well, I don't know exactly because if we well, can do a one fell swoop, right, with the architectural review. Because I don't. If you think you're going to need a variance, that becomes an issue. But typically, you would show sign location and conforming, and then you get a sign permit. I assume, Alexa, at the time you get it, it's time. Appropriate. Show will, 
So we'll show a location and size, maybe not the detail, Correct, yeah. to make sure it's conforming. That way you can say right. yes. Okay. So if you can, um, that was a very nice way the building inspector corrected me. You know, that's, that's very good. So if you can show it at such time as you're down the line, it's going to have to get proof anyway. But anyway, so it's ultimately, whatever the details really are, will have, have to be to do on the first Wednesday of each month. You want to come here, you come back here. Right. But it's not going to be a separate meeting. You can do it all of one and your site plan. Okay. Show us what the sign looks like. We'll prove it at the same time. Uh, I think that was it for Al's comments. I'd be glad to answer any comments the board has on the additional information that was submitted. And look forward to your comments after the site visit. All right. So... Again, the, the, I thought it was a good idea to have the site visit. Again, uh, Dave reminded the board, and I'll say it again, okay, we're there not to have discussions out there. We're not supposed to be discussing. This is the place to discuss everything in front of everybody, right? But I think it's a good idea to look at it, the perspective of their side of it also. So I think it's going to give us, you know, any landscaping and, and that. Also gives us a little bit of an idea of, you know what the openness could possibly be to get out to them you and i talked today a little bit i think we have to address somehow we don't know what kind of a noise issue there is so you and i talked about that today so there's different ways that if this gets approved it could be mitigated there could be soundproofing done into the catering hall possibly uh you know there could be uh uh, uh limitations on when bands or anything could play you know i mean a whole bunch of things have to be looked at uh and depending on what you propose, you know, we may ask possibly some of the neighbors out there that would put a noise, uh, what, what do we call that thing? Uh, uh, a noise, de not decibel reader? A meter, a meter, that's it, noise meter, out on some of the other properties or something like that, to just see what we might be faced with and stuff like that. So that's eventually gonna have to be addressed. So, you know, we want to, uh, you know, so I mean, it's a, we can't. Obviously, in your deliberations, I hope you consider obviously the Lyceum Theater is right there and the outdoor stage at the pavilion that this town has music events at. Yeah. So we're consistent kind of with the neighboring, uh, with the neighborhood, but obviously we'll look at the noise issue as part of our. We'll look at all of that. Yeah. You know, these are just issues that we still have to go through and address. And Understood. Like we'll eventually need some renderings. Uh, uh, we had architectural yeah, elevations. We, yeah, we make sure. you submitted that. It's been going on for a long time. Yeah, it was a couple months ago. So, uh, all right. So we will eventually want to readdress that too. We'll just take a look at that. So, all right. So, Larry, I'll start with you. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, you know, Al already pointed out we need detail on the light fixtures, but also we need to show a map of light exposed, no radiation, or how far it's being broadcast. That was part of the submission. Yes, and. One of the things to consider uh, on the lake side of, uh, of the building, any outdoor lighting, you got to remember, um, even if it's downward facing, you have to be careful. You have to have a lot of shielding because if it hits the water, it'll reflect right off the water into the neighbors. So you have to be considerate of that. Um, the other thing, I believe you mentioned that there are going to be curbs, but there's nothing indicated on the plans that there are curbs. No, nope, I indicated the opposite uh, in my response letter. The only curb that is shown is at the top of the retaining wall on the northern part of the site to direct water uh, to the catch basin. Uh, the rest of the site was proposed to be paved but not curbed, um, and there'll be uh, paved swales along and especially in the front it's along the existing stone walls so we're going to keep those in place as part of the feature for the site uh we'll pave up to them and have a like a reverse slope away from them slightly for a couple feet so that we can keep the water uh away from the wall but running in the pavement to the catch basins that even have been located the lower, even on the, the parking lot just right by the road there because there's a catch basin down there as well yep. how is that catch basin going to catch the water as well down lower Go down, go down towards the road, and that corner will wait to the left. Yeah, I it's there, got to be on the next sheet, I think. There's a there. Yep. Right the, if there, you can right go to the next one. sheet, uh, Don, it should shoot. Yeah, we need to go to keep going down. Yeah, right there you can see there's a catch basin. Yep, you see, and there's the proposed paved swale uh, shown. Okay. 
along the back of the wall, uh, you know, directing the stormwater to that catch so basin. So you can have a swale to catch water and direct it to the catch basin. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I just think that addressing the hours of operation and how the length of the music, all that kind of, just because, like you say, Lyceum's right there, but you have to make sure that everything complies. So there, are, if you go to the site plan, there are hours of operations and, and some comments regarding uh, noise that were developed as part of our review in 2019. Obviously, it's a few years later. I have a little less hair, but... Is it in the notes of the site plan? Yeah, it should be on the right-hand side on the site plan sheet, so probably the first sheet. First sheet? Yeah. Yep, keep going up. It should be that so one. Read it. And to the right hand side. Yeah, it should be notes. Notes. So, outdoor events will be limited to 9 p.m. That was something we had discussed with the board previously. Um, I think hours of operation may be down further. Parking. Oops. Someplace in there, I was pretty sure they were. Zoom out of hair. What's this outdoor event? Yeah, that's the one. And then there was hours of operation. Yeah. Well, you got to get them on for us. That's all. Yeah. We're not yeah. solving anything tonight. Yeah, pretty sure, unless they got deleted when somebody moved something, which is possible. Could you zoom out a little bit, Don? See if we can. A little more. Maybe a, like a separate table that says hours of operation or something. I remember. Parking, no. Hmm. All right, we'll check. Yeah, they will check. That. I know they were on some of the earlier versions. Maybe they got deleted somehow. All right, you got to get the hours of operation. Yeah. So you can have a final discussion on that. So. All right, so now you and I talked today. You didn't necessarily think it was a good idea to come in the next meeting. You wanted Correct. to buy until October. Yeah, we want to get. Uh, Orange County DPW straighten out, make sure they're satisfied with our interest locations. Uh, I don't want to be coming back with plans and then changing locations of entrances if they're not happy with our northern entrance or something along those lines. So okay. um, get our Department of Health in. That's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, also like to know about any bog turtles potential. Um, you know, we had done initial analysis in 2019. It was actually January of 2019 or it was probably in the fall and we wrote the report in january um so i want to make sure that the dec is satisfied uh with whatever additional information they're requesting so okay and that also give karen enough time based on the uh august 17th site visit and give her time to look at what you did or either yep, say get us comments yay, that no, we can re respond whatever. to as well yeah yep. she can respond to everything at that point absolutely back to you uh and that so and so all right, any other comments, questions by board? Anything else you want? Okay, we'll see you. Then you'll schedule with Melissa the October. Yes. To just get it, to get a slide in October. Very good. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, so um, gonna If we're going to have a site visit on our site, if you could just let me know if you'd like to do that in September or something. Yeah, I think it might be better to maybe in September. We'll, we'll call for something in September. We'll go to your site. Okay see that all right very so good let's keep it just to the crew report site for, uh, thank you so, okay have a good night dave we got you out of here before 9 30. all right, all right. <laughs> thanks Rose. all right gang so uh that's better we have a, again we got a busy agenda already queuing up for the next meeting so, you know uh, so broccoli patch will not be in um NRX is coming back new york solar is coming back um uh, uh to see us um Dave, so we don't know if we're gonna to have to do a coordinator, we won't have to there all, there's only one agency. Okay. If there's right. only one involved agency or whatever. Okay. And Karen will take into consideration the larger evergreens, which is probably a better idea, Jackie. Yeah. I think that would um, for the green giants yeah. for this property. Even considering the size of different because they can get up towards they uh, can. thirty they feet can. or so. Yeah. Big, right? And they're fast growers, but if you go with a larger size to start with too. All right. Yeah, we're going to large size the storm. All right, gang. So uh, we'll see everybody on the 17th. Melissa will get a, a reminder out.
I think we're going to 25. 25 Premier Ponds. 25 Ponds is where we're going to meet. Okay. Uh, and every what? Yes. We're the planning board. We can do what we want. We want to plan. No, we're gonna, I think you'll have a part of the street. It's a wide street. It's a wide street, so I think we're going to do so. All right. Um, August 7th. August 17th, all right? But Melissa will get the yeah, final good. details good. out. Six o'clock, right? Now. Six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks. With motion to close. Good night. You don't got to go home, but you can't take it. <laughs> so I got to go.